How's it going guys? Leon here and some of you guys have been asking me for a question and answer video so I guess I'll just gonna grace the internet with this crappy video. If you guys are wondering why I'm on the floor that's because we are currently in the process of transferring to a different house and I'm going to transfer to a different room so say goodbye to this room now. Bye room. That sounded like a T-Rex. I think the T-Rex is gone. Okay. I'll just make my voice louder so that you guys could hear it over the drilling. First question, how should we start the design process? I have six steps that I basically follow when doing a design. First step is defining the problem. Second step is collecting information. Third step is brainstorming and analyze. Now step four, developing solutions. So the fifth step I usually do is gather feedback. So this is where you show your design to your parents or your dog or you know a random stranger on the street and ask them what they think about your design. If they say it sucks just run away and cry on a corner of your bedroom. No don't don't do that guys. No matter how hard or how harsh the criticism is you you gotta take it as constructive criticism. Change your design and make it better. Which leads us to the sixth step which is improving your design based on the criticisms you got. You, you gotta spot the haters from the people who want you to improve. You know, haters usually just give crappy comments like, Your nose is too big. Something like that. So, yeah, you gotta spot the haters from the constructive criticismers. And then after you do that six step, just begin the whole process. It's a, it's a wheel of design, cir circle of design. The circle of design. <laughs> the worst. I'm sorry, guys. That, that. Yeah. Who is the best architect in your opinion? I like a bunch of architects, but I don't think that any one of them is like the best. Kind of like picking what fruit do you like? What's your favorite fruit? What do you think the best fruit is? Do you like mangoes? Mangoes are good, but they cause diabetes. Do you like apples? Apples could have worms. Also, have you ever got hit in the head with an apple? It's like hell. Oranges? Have you ever got your eyes squirted by an orange or a lemon? Sure, they taste good, but once you open it and then the squirty thing comes out of the orange and hits your eye, you're like, No, I'm blind forever. Oh. What was the question again? Who's the best architect in your opinion? So, I have four architects that I admire really much, but I don't think any one of them is the best. Frank Lloyd Wright, Le Corbusier, Le Corbusier. People pronounce it differently, but I like it. I like to pronounce it Le Corbusier because why did they put the letter R in the last of his name if you're not gonna pronounce it? Respect the letter R, guys. Le Corbusier. Or Le Corbusier. Whatever floats your goat. Third one I like is Zaha Hadid. And then the fourth one is Björk Ingels. Moving on to the next question. What do you think about three years of architecture degree? Is it okay or is it isn't it enough time? You know what? If you if you guys could reduce architectural degree to just one year, I say go for that. After school, you're still going to learn, so it's like a never-ending school. Architecture is just never-ending learning. Doesn't matter if your school is one year, three years, or five years. Just get whatever is most available to you. Less is more or less is a bore. Which one do you agree with? So when I was a student, my motto used to be less is a bore. So the more things I put in my plate, the more grades I have. Right now as an architect, I think I, I'm i more on the side of less is more. Because the simpler you solve something or the simpler your solution is to a certain problem means the more thought that you put into that solution. But you know, that could change when I grow old. Less could be a bore, you know, like... The less hair I have, the more boring I become. That has nothing to do with architecture. What is your favorite anime? My favorite anime is Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. I also like Naruto and One Piece, but you know, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood is the shortest of those three, and I'm a lazy boy, so I like that anime the best. Moving on. Job opportunities in the Philippines with regards to architecture? Question mark. Um, there are a lot of job opportunities here in the Philippines for architects. You could become a graphic designer. You can become a photographer. You just need more training with photography because that just doesn't happen overnight. But you have the basics for it since architects are predispositioned to use the golden ratio and we know we know proportion and all that other artsy 
artsy fartsy stuff. So yeah, you could do photography, you could become a painter, be a carpenter, contractor, anything under the sun. You could even sell ice cream and make ice cream houses. That's a great idea. Patent pendant, don't, don't copy that idea guys. That, that belongs to me now. Every time you make an ice cream that is shaped like a house, I'm gonna have to charge you $10. Do you still create concept ideas towards a project, a house, a building? The answer to that is yes. I always create concepts and ideas for houses. Mostly, I just steal it from Pinterest and Art Daily. But you know, I, I think that's still considered creating a concept or idea. You guys don't do that? Real man of genius. Architects are usually overlooked in the Philippines. Do you recommend going abroad to work and study as an architect? Some of my classmates and batchmates that work abroad have more monies than me right now. If you have the opportunity to go abroad and practice there, that's good. But I think being an architect here in the Philippines is not that bad too because, you know, it only depends on what company you do here or how many projects you get. So it doesn't really matter where you go if you go to abroad or stay in the Philippines. As long as you are a good architect, you will have no problem financially. You will have no more problems with overall happiness because architecture is a job of passion, which means that you love what you are doing. So you could be doing it abroad and here in the Philippines. Either way, you will be happy. I hope that answered your question. What is your design philosophy? So my design philosophy is as long as it looks good and you get paid for it, architecture. <laughs> the worst. Right now, I'm just mooching off other great architects like design philosophy less is more is that a design philosophy see i'm not even sure so pass how did you come up with great building concepts who are you man who's who's asking these questions how do you know that i've come came up that i come i've come up with great building concepts i i don't have any buildings up yet so i haven't come up with any great building concepts so that question pass what are your design inspirations? My design inspirations, like I said, Pinterest and Art Daily. There you go. That's the only design inspirations you're gonna need, guys. Trust me on that. You're welcome. Kidding aside, the design inspirations, I just, you know, I sketch a lot when I am in the design process and I look at a bunch of buildings. And from those buildings, I get a bunch of features that I like, you know, the proportion of this, this building, I like that part. And then I like the materials from this building, I also incorporate that to my design. So there are a bunch of design inspirations for me, you know, get the color palette from this certain project, go outside and smell, smell the air in your site. That could also be a design inspiration or you could like check what the clients like. Are they into basketball? Do they like Ferraris? Are they into Lil Jon's music? That could be an inspiration, you know, make make a jacuzzi like Lil Jon's jacuzzi. Yeah! Those are where I get my design inspirations from. I want to become an architect but my parents disapprove because of how the low salary and unsure job security is. I need advice. So your parents are not wrong. Architecture is one of the most risky and, you know, unsure professions in the whole world. Maybe not. There are like there are people who fight sharks for a living. But you know, it is it is really risky to become an architect because you'll never know when you are going to get a project because you know, someone might invent a pop-up house and, you know, architects just become obsolete. What was the question again? Oh yeah, your parents disapprove because of the low salary. I would rather like earn a modest living doing something I love than earn millions and millions of dollars spending every day of my life in misery and doing something I do not like. Because you know, life is only composed of the moments that you spend. I r I'd rather have a profession that I really like doing than you know, have a crappy profession and then have lots of money but go home sad and you just sleep, sleep in your money and you know, make paper planes with your money and stuff. At the end of the day, money is just money and your life is gone. So that's the only resource that you cannot buy is time. So go for what you want to do. If you want to be an architect, go for it. Your parents will appreciate this in the long run. If you obey your parents and become a doctor, in the future, you're going to hate your parents because Why did you make me become a doctor? Now I hate my life. But if you become an architect and you end up having a really happy life, you will thank your parents and your parents are gonna be happy and you and your parents gonna be best friends for life. Yeah. Crappy advice from Leon, 2018. Awkward. 
Hey pal, how did you overcome struggles and stress when you are in college as an architect? So how did I overcome struggles and stress? I did not really overcome them. Rather, I got used to struggles and stress. And now struggles and stress is part of my life and it's the glue that is holding up my life together. Without struggles and stress, I would be a, a very lazy man. How do you treat yourself for achieving little things? So I, I basically just sit down, watch a movie I love. I, I like a lot of love. I just sit down, watch a movie I like or I love, and you know, buy some takeout, eat some food, play basketball. I, I just do anything I like doing. And then, you know, doing those things gets me pumped up to do architecture stuff again. So it's basically like a cycle. I do architecture, I finish something, I do something aside from architecture, like play computer, watch movies. While doing those things, I, I miss architecture and working again so I do architecture again and then after that I do my hobbies again it's just a circle of hobbies and work oh someone's calling wait all right guys I'm back what was the question again how can you know that architecture is for you this is how I knew that architecture was for me so for the first year I was really having trouble and I was really failing bad. I didn't really improve for the second year but I really had fun while doing it it didn't matter that I was failing as long as I was having fun doing it, eventually I improved and you know, architecture just became part of my life. So if for the first year you enjoyed yourself but you were failing, then I think architecture is for you. Basically the only common factor is you enjoying yourself. So if you do enjoy architecture, I think architecture will be for you because it doesn't matter if you are failing at first because you will improve on that. The feeling of being happy while doing something, that will never change. When people say you will learn to love architecture, there's no such thing. I think it's a love at first sight, you know, because the site where you build your structure is called a site. What? Where, where, where was I again? Oh yeah, so architecture, in my opinion, is like a love at first sight type of thing. If you did not like it at first, you, you are never gonna like it ever. That's how I knew that architecture was for me. <coughs> oh, I need water. Just gonna lubricate my throat with my own saliva. Alright, next question. Are you pro with the increase in CPD units? Is it not unfair for those who work as draftsmen? For those of you who are not familiar what CPD units are, basically CPD units are these units that you need to collect these units, kind of like Pokemans. In order to renew your license, you need a certain amount of CPD units. So for example, in order to renew my license, I need 42 CPD units. So I go to a seminar and that seminar gives me two CPD units. So I am two more points closer to renewing my license. I'm not really in favor of CPD units in general. I, I don't like the whole system of how it works because I think it should it should be somewhat different. It should be tier-based CPD unit system. So for example, I am a level one architect. So in order to level up to become a level two architect, I need to gain five CPD units and then renew my license. So I go to seminars and earn that five CPD units. So I go to PRC and renew my license with the five CPD units they level me up to a level 2 architect. So now that I'm a level 2 architect, I can now make houses. Yeah, level up. And then I want to make like, you know, taller buildings, you know, skyscrapers and that sort. So for that, I need to be a level 3 architect. So I need to earn a certain amount of CPDs, like 100 CPDs or something to become a level 3 architect. And once I achieve those CPDs, I become a level 3 architect, so on and so forth. Could become a level 3 architect and stuff like that. You know, I think that's how the CPD units should be based upon. If there's someone out there who's doing the CPD law, maybe you could do it like that so that the CPDs become more exciting, you know, like playing a role-playing game or it's like playing Ragnarok, some, you know, some game like that. So yeah, I'm not in favor of the CPDs because it's too time consuming and you know, all the resources that you need to allocate in order to just get a CPD units to renew your license. I, I don't agree with that. Last questions. How was your architectural student life? Architectural student life could be divided into two parts. The first part is my second year and first year where I was still getting used to doing all the architecture stuff. So at that stage of my life, it was pretty hard and I failed a bunch of subjects. But for the second half of my architecture student life, it was rather easy because I got used to it. First year, second year, life sucked. Onwards, it was pretty easy peasy lemon squeezy what do you find difficult about it so i think what made first year and second year of architectural life um harder 
it's because I, I got culture shock and I wasn't really used to drawing every day, all day, 24 seven. But once I got used to all those things that we do, you know, like it got a little bit easier, you know, it's just, it's just getting used to it. You just need to get used to all the stress and the stress will just go away or integrate within you and you just become half person, half stress. Yeah, that's the last question, guys. Wait, oh, need more water. Must push through. If you guys like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe down below for more videos like this from me, your boy Lian. Usually, I post cooler and you know more B-roll and stuff like that. But for this video, I think the question and answer will do because this week has been really busy, guys. I have been doing a ton of things. Also, tomorrow I'm going somewhere far from this place. So I, I don't have time to add cool effects to this question and answer video. But if you tuned in and watched this whole video, thank you for doing that. You are super awesome. I will see you on my next video, which will be much cooler than this. Also, I'm going to show you a sneak peek of what my next video will probably be. Oh, it is all. Okay, so that's just a little sneak peek of the next video that I will be doing. It's going to be so awesome. So just... Just stay tuned for that. Again, thank you for watching. I'll see you on my next video. Flying peace.